Hello friends, in this video we will see the inbuilt stack data structure in C++. As we know, stack is a data structure which follows LIFO, that is last in first out method, where the element which is stored last in the stack, that is the element at the top, will be accessed first. And both insertion and deletion takes place at the top. Now to use the inbuilt stack data structure in C++, we have to include the header file stack. After that, we can create a stack in our program. And to create a stack, we write stack and within the less than and greater than sign, we define the type of the stack, which can be integer, double, character, etc. depending on our need. And after that, we specify the name of the stack. For example, if we want to define a stack of type integer called s1, we will write stack int s1. Similarly, if we have to define a character stack s2, we can simply write stack char s2. And likewise, we can create a float stack S3. One thing to note here is that if we create a stack of type integer, then we can only push integer values on that stack. Similarly, if we create a stack of type character, we can only push character values on that stack. Now let's see how we will perform the various operations on these stacks. That is push to insert an element at the top, pop to delete an element from the top, top to return the element at top, and empty to check if the stack is empty or not. Also note that the time complexity of these operations would be big of one, that is they are performed in constant time. So let's start our program by including the header file iostream and then including the header file stack. We will be using the standard namespace and after that we can start our main function where let's say we will create a stack of type integer called s and as we have just created a stack and not inserted any elements, the stack s would initially be empty. So let's go ahead and insert the elements 1, 2 and 3 in the stack. To do that, we will use the inbuilt push function which takes as argument the value to be inserted into the stack. So to insert the first value, we will simply write s.push1 and this will insert the element 1 onto the stack. Also, if you remember, while working with stack, we have a top pointer which always points to the topmost element, which currently is 1. So similarly, let's insert the elements 2 and 3. So we will simply write s.push2 to insert the element 2 onto the stack and s.push3 to insert the element 3 onto the stack. So now we have three elements in the stack, which are 1, 2 and 3, where the topmost element is 3. Now let's look at the pop operation that is deleting an element from the top. For that, we have an inbuilt function called pop. So if you want to delete the topmost element, we can simply say s.pop, which will delete the topmost element from the stack. Now, if you want to display the element, which is on the top of the stack, we can use the top function, which returns the element at the top. So if we see out that the element at the top is s.top, we will get the output as two. And similarly, to check if the stack is empty or not, we have the function empty which gives us a boolean value, which is true if the stack is empty and false if the stack is not empty. So currently, as we can see that our stack is not empty. So if we see out s dot empty, we will simply get zero. And finally, there is another very useful function, which is the size function, which gives us the total size of the stack. That is the total number of elements present in the stack. So if we want to get the size of the stack, we can simply write s dot size, which in the current statement would print two. So this is how we can perform various operations on the inbuilt stack data structure. And that was all for this video. Thank you for watching.